Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. So we continue um, with dynamics. Um, this is uh, part of the Physics for Teens course, which is presented on unizor.com. That's the website. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture and all others on this website because it contains very detailed notes for each lecture. It has certain educational functionality for people who want to study under supervision of uh, parent or, or teacher or whoever. Um, so, and by the way, the site is completely free and no advertising. So I do suggest you to go to unizor.com. Oh, by the way, yeah, um, it also contains a prerequisite course for this, which is the math for teens. So math for teens, it's prerequisite for physics for teens. Now, we're talking about momentum of motion. This is a completely new concept. You, well, you remember we had the concept of like space, time, speed, acceleration, velocity, mass. So this is yet another physical concept. Now, in this case, it's not a primary um, concept. It's derived. So we will define it, basically. And uh, it's a very, very convenient um, characteristic uh, of the motion. And uh, it will be obvious why at the end of this lecture. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so first of all, I would like to consider a, a relatively simple motion, not the simplest. The simplest motion is uh, when there are no forces and uh, the object just moves uh, along its uh, straight line trajectory with a constant velocity. So this is the, the most uh, simple. The second simple simplest uh, way of motion is uh, motion with the constant acceleration. Now, since there is a constant acceleration, there is a force, obviously. So we are assuming that we are talking about the case when there is a straight line. This is the trajectory of the movement. The force is exactly um, uh, along this line. So this is our object and it has certain mass and it has certain acceleration which is directed along the same um, line of straight line of motion. So this is the very very simple case and uh, since it's a one-dimensional case I don't really have to use the vectors so A is basically a scalar and uh, let this be the positive direction of the x-axis so A is positive and F is also positive. And we all know the second law, uh, Newton's second law, which states this. So F is a constant force uh, um, acting along the straight line trajectory of the object. A is acceleration, M is a mass. OK, so let's now consider two moments in time. First is when the object was here. This is t0, or just t. That would be even better. And another moment in, in time, then the object move to this position. This is t plus delta t. So this interval is delta t. Now, speed was v, and speed of t plus delta t was obviously v plus delta v. Speed is increasing from uh, the value of v uh, this object had at this particular moment in time and by the time t plus delta t speed has increased obviously. By how much? Well we do know the acceleration, right? Now the average increase of the speed per unit of time would be v of t plus delta t minus v of t divided by t plus delta t minus t, right? We uh, have the difference between speeds, difference between times, and this is obviously delta v divided by delta t, and this is the average acceleration. But since acceleration is constant, that's exactly equal to a, the same a. It's a constant acceleration, very simple, right? So what do we have from here if we will use this? Well, this would be m delta v divided by delta t 
or f times delta t is equal to m times delta v. Same thing. So, increment of speed times mass is increment of time times force. This is a very interesting equation. It has far-reaching consequences. Now, since this is true, let's just make our delta t smaller and smaller. Obviously, we all know from calculus that whenever it happens, this delta v divided by delta t would be basically a derivative, right? So that goes to m dv by dt or m v prime. So this is a derivative of the speed. Okay, so what we can say is that force is equal to m times Deliver derivative, uh, I'll use dv by dt. Now, what's interesting about this equation, since delta t can be infinitesimally small, we don't really have to depend on constant force and constant velocity, uh, or constant acceleration, etc. Because all we need is the cons co constant value of these within this delta t. Within the next delta t, it can be different. That's okay. No problems, right? But within the delta t, we, we assume that if these functions are smooth enough, then basically, as, uh, whenever we are um, making this interval smaller and smaller, this is the final uh, value. So f can be actually a function of t and m can be function of t. No, not m. I, I, I just m. No, m is constant right now. Let just for now assume it's constant. The, but the velocity is, const is a function of... Uh, it's not a constant, it's a function of t. Right. So, this is already a little bit more general um, formula because it does not require um, the values of the force and acceleration to be constants. Okay, that's good. Now, what can we say then next? Well, next is we can obviously extend this formula for um, f being a vector in three-dimensional space. So not just we have this particular straight line as a trajectory. F can be anything. Uh, it, it's a vector which can be dependent on time, obviously, so it's changing. So a trajectory also can change any way we want. And the formula will still be the same because obviously for each coordinate, the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and, 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 and z-coordinate, the formula is exactly the same. So it can be combined into uh, the vector formula, and so I can, I can actually do this, vector, vector. So this is the vector of velocity, general vector of velocity of the point, uh, which has a mass m, and the uh, uh, the force is, is is f. It's any um, vector which depends on uh, on the time, and obviously that uh, equation would be true. All right. It is important, and again, it can be actually rewritten in differential form equals m dv of t. That's the same thing, but this is the derivative form and this is the differential form. Now, um, what's also interesting is that I, since m is a constant, I can uh, um, multiply m under the derivative, right? Because the uh, factor uh, multiply, multiplied by a function can be taken outside of the derivative. So it can be d dt and here I will have m v t. That's the same thing. 
and here also the same thing differential of m times v of t now one of the things which can be derived from here by the way is that if there is no um, function at all so the object is completely by itself so f of t is equal to zero then this is a constant so if f of t is zero what follows is that m times v of t is constant what's also interesting is that in this particular um, notation I do not really require m to be a constant so we obviously derived it in case m is a constant but again if my time limit from t to t plus delta t is very small even if mass is changing smoothly changing you still will have you, you will still have exactly the same uh, type of a formula so m also can be a function of uh, of t there is no nothing wrong with that so in any case um, this particular quantity is called momentum of motion and we see that the momentum of motion is not changing if there are no external forces that's very very important now what uh, I will do next is I will exemplify this um, with a very important um, example which will show actually how important this particular quantity is um, here is the pro here, here, here is this example I mean so far it all seems to be like just manipulation with formulas which you know doesn't make much sense but this example will show you how deeply this momentum of motion is actually embedded in our world let's consider a two-stage rocket so this is the rocket and it has two stages now it's flying freely so all the engines have already finished everything is okay no problem um, the first stage uh, probably burned its fuel whatever it is it ended the job and the um, the rocket is actually flying freely in the space and let's assume there are no close by uh, planets so it's just free space no gravitational fields etc so it's basically flying along a straight trajectory according to whatever system of reference it, it is in uh, and then we have to really get rid of this first stage which has already you know burned it, it did its function now we have to get rid of it let's consider a very ideal um, kind of a uh, scenario when whatever what, what happens is there are some mechanism inside this rocket which basically force this first stage uh, to go back along the same line for, for, for simplicity um, so let's just assume there is certain internal force F um, just for simplicity you might consider okay this is a spring which is actually um, tied together um, and then at certain moment we release the spring so it springs and pushes this one down and obviously this one up with the same speed because there is a third law of Newton right so there is a certain fo force which acts during the time t and uh, this force actually allows um, our first stage to go back and the first stage and, and second stage continues uh, to go 
uh, along the same trajectory. Now, during this particular time period, this force obviously accelerates and then it finishes. That's it. Like spring has already done its job, it's finished, and then the first stage goes uh, by its own inertia and, and the second stage continues going by its own inertia. All right, so let's just consider the following thing. Let's say the first and the second has certain masses and the whole rocket has a speed b in the very beginning. Now what happens when I act on this uh, with this force during this time um, with the first stage? Well, it has um, initial speed v, right, as the whole thing, and then I am uh, acting on this particular first stage with this force, with this time, which means the acceleration is this, right? Acceleration is equal to um, in this case is uh, mass is m1, this is acceleration, this is force, so acceleration is this. Now, during the time t, if I have acceleration, my speed would increase or decrease, depending on the sign of the acceleration, by a times t, right? Now, in this case, since we are, um, since the rocket moves this direction and we are uh, pushing the first stage backwards, so it's minus. So it's minus f divided by m1t. And this is my speed at the end of this process. This is the speed of this first stage after we have finished pushing it out. Now, if we have pushed really hard, it may go completely uh, in the opposite direction along the same trajectory. If we pushed it, you know, slightly, it will just separate uh, from, uh, from the second stage and it will just move slower. That's it. And it will be farther and farther, but it will still continue moving this direction, but slower than, but than, than the second stage. Now, as far as the second stage is concerned, initially it has also a speed v. Now, the acceleration it will have is the same force, because the same force which goes uh, uh, towards the uh, first stage, it will push the second stage uh, forward along its trajectory. But the acceleration would be the same force divided by a different mass and the same time t. That's what we know, right? Now, what happens next is very simple. Um, I would like to actually convert it into momentums of both stages, both parts of the rocket. So, the final momentum is, I will multiply this by m1, so the final momentum is this. Final momentum of the second stage is, now this is the first, this is the second, second is equal to m2v plus ft, right? m v minus, m v plus, okay. Now, let's add it together. What do I have? I will have m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals 2. Well, this will cancel out, obviously. And this has the same v, so it would be m1 plus m2 v. Now, m1 plus m2 is the mass of the entire rocket. Now, this is a very important equation. What is mv? mv is momentum of motion of an entire rocket before uh, we separated the stages. What is this? This is a sum of momentums of two parts of the rockets into which we, are, which we have separated this rocket. So the sum of momentum after the action and this is the total momentum before action. So if the whole rocket with two stages is a system, let's call it a system, right? 
then this is the total momentum of the system after this separation happened and this is the total momentum before this separation so our total momentum is constant you know same thing we go back to whatever i was talking before about constant momentum if there are no forces and now there is a force here but it's internal force it's internal for the system so if we have a system of objects and there are no external forces upon them like gravitational field or something like that which definitely distorts the whole picture so if there are no external forces if all forces are internal then obviously different parts of our system will start moving differently but the total momentum will be preserved so it's conservation of the momentum and we will talk about this later on i just wanted you to understand how important this momentum actually is momentum of motion in case the system is enclosed without any kind of um, external influence is preserved that's why it's very very important all right now um i do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture again it's on unisor.com um, you go to uh, the website and there is a physics 14 course uh, on the left um, in the menu and then you choose mechanics you choose dynamics and in the dynamics you have momentum as a particular topic and that's where it is this is the first lecture of this the whole topic is actually called i think momentum and impulse all right okay so that's it for today thank you very much and good luck